Hi, I'm Sandra Burris with Keller Williams Realty. Today we're going to talk about how to use your IRA to buy real estate. Stay tuned. In our last video, Real Estate Investing for Beginners, I mentioned that you could use an IRA for the source of funds to purchase your first investment property. I think this is a great thing to check out for those people who are interested in owning investment properties and want to have a little bit more control over their retirement accounts. We used our IRA to purchase two investment properties over the last few years and the process is very different and we learned along the way of some things to do and not to do. It took some getting used to to figure out how to pay for it and what the timeline is and how to get your rent money into your investment account. But once we got those things ironed out, it ended up being a really easy thing to do. One of the things you really have to pay attention to are the rules associated with the IRA. This is a self-directed IRA, which means you get to make decisions on it, but you still have to follow the IRS regulations. Some of the things that you can and can't do with a self-directed IRA is, first of all, you can evaluate your tenants. You can have them do credit checks and background checks, and you can have conversations with them. One of the things you can't do is rent your investment property to your daughter or your in-laws. You have to have an arm's length distance from anyone who's a part of the transaction. One of the things you can do is you can decide on improvements. You may want to add granite or tile or change flooring or put a new roof on or anything like that. The things that you can't do is you can't pay for those items personally. Anything that you do to the property has to come out of the investment account. And then there's several ways to do that. For instance, you could have a prepaid debit card in your account or you can request a check to be sent to the contractor who does the work for you. Another thing you can do is you can negotiate the purchase price when you purchase the investment property. You can decide on what you want to charge for rent. But the thing that you can't do is sign contracts. The signing of the contracts has to be done by the plan administrator. You read and approve all documents but everything has to be signed by them. What you can do is interview and get bids for contractors for work to be done. What you can't do is do the work yourself and purchase the materials. That could be a disqualifier for you. That's something you really don't want to do. One thing you can do is you can buy an investment property with your IRA in a resort area or a college town. What you can't do is go stay at the property for vacation or have your son or daughter and their friends live in the house if you purchase in a college town. Those are some of the things when I mention this to people that they ask me about. They say, oh, it'd be so great. I can I can buy a, a, a house in Florida and we can go down there on vacation. It's like, no, you can't do that. That would be a disqualifier. Some of the things that you just want to pay attention to are, am I keeping an arm's length distance on all transactions? That's one of the key points with the self-directed IRA that I tell people to, to pay attention to. When we purchased our investment properties, the first one, we had very little to do to the property before we rented it. We did have it cleaned professionally. We had the contractor paid out of the IRA. We were able at that point to start looking at tenants. We were able to evaluate them through an app we use called My Smart Move. That's how we did the tenant evaluation. And then we selected the tenant. And then once the tenant was ready to sign the contract. They signed the contract and then our plan administrator signed the contract on our behalf for the IRA. And then when my tenant pays rent, they pay directly into the IRA. They can have a debit transfer into the account for your IRA. So again, it's a little bit clunkier at first. One thing that people do is sometimes they'll hire a property management company. You're not required to do that by the IRS, but you do have to be very specific and particular about how you 
do things, but they'll hire a property management company to sort of handle some of those things on their behalf, and that makes it a little bit easier. You can purchase a property as a partial owner. So for instance, if you have 50% of a property and another person, friend of yours, has 50% in their IRA, it makes it much easier if you're using a property management company for your tenants so they only have one person to go to. The other thing is whenever you have maintenance, one of the things that we did with ours is we purchased a home warranty that was purchased ahead of time and then when we paid the fee, when we had a contractor come out, it was paid out of a prepaid debit card. I mean, you have a portal with your administrator. You go in and approve those expenditures. You have to submit paperwork for it, but it's very simple. You get used to it and you don't have that many times that you have to do that. I think a self-directed IRA is a huge opportunity that people just don't realize that they can take advantage of. I hope this was helpful to you. And as always, like and subscribe and leave a comment below if you've had experience using a self-directed IRA. Thanks so much.